everyone and welcome back to the Class 47 Peter YouTube channel. And you're joining me for more progress of the new layout. So the last couple of videos have been centred on the progress of the station, which as I say I'm very pleased with what I've done. I mean again as I've said before there are a couple of little things that I could add at a later date, but I'm happy with how it's looking, I've got it to how I want it to be. There has also been a compromise as well, and particularly with the paving slabs on the platform ramps, at least on a couple of them at least, because I had to trim down some of the slabs to stop certain items of rolling stock catching on them. So it means that for one or two of the ramps they don't have an overhang with the slabs. But that's a compromise that I've had to make. So this video is going to be focused on this area that you can see in front of you. Now if you cast your memory back to part 2 of the new layout build, in that video I did discuss the plans that I proposed for this layout. And for this area, what I had in mind was having a structure going all the way across down the middle here. So basically it would be sort of like a bridge, shall we say. And the plan for that was, there was going to be a road going across the top of that with a high street with buildings on it. But... I have decided that I'm going to abandon that idea and there is a reason for that. Now we actually have made a structure that was originally going to go across here on this end of the layout. I'll show a couple of photos. So that was made using, we did have a spare baseboard left. We couldn't use the whole board, it had to be done in two pieces because it wasn't long enough otherwise. And that was mounted onto loft legs. Now, in the photographs, I never took any photographs of it on the layout. But from the photos, you're probably thinking that looks a bit high. And when I placed it onto this end of the layout, it was really too high. And it looked a bit silly. We could have shortened it in height, that wouldn't have necessarily been an issue. But when it came to playing around with buildings and road vehicles, just to see how it would have looked later on when it came to doing all the detail work etc it then dawned on me that the road was going to be too wide and it just wouldn't look right we could have made the road a bit narrower but then it would have meant that the pavements would have been too wide as well we could have shortened the baseboards and made them narrower but then I'd be worried about getting less detail on there and so to me really when I it just felt like it just wasn't going to work right. It's a pity because of the ideas I had in mind. The other thing was, I did at one stage consider adding like a station car park and maybe a couple of houses with back gardens and front gardens in. Maybe like an old pavement that's been really worn down, run down, etc. Not really used and abused. And perhaps like a tire and exhaust place as well. But the thing with that was, the boards would have to be made even wider, or at least make an extension for somewhere like, let's say, around here. And I wouldn't really want to do that, because I might want to put, well, I will be adding other bits of detail there. So what's my plan then, for this end of the layout? Well, this is what I have proposed. Do hear me out. Now I know I've said that I wasn't going to do a tunnel on this layer, so I'm sure I've said that before. It certainly wasn't in the plans when I discussed them. I have however decided that I will be doing a tunnel, but it's going to be different. I have already gone out and bought some of the Batman Scene Craft double track tunnel portals. Of course you'll need two to go on either end. I'm also going to get some narrow gauge tunnel portals as well. 
to fit here, just across there. And then the plan is there'll be some brick wall slotted in in the middle, between somewhere around, let's say, there, definitely going down the middle and just there, between the narrow gauge and the standard gauge track. And the plan is I'm not going to have anything on top of the tunnel. What I'm going to do instead, now, I also discussed the plans that I was going to do something like, something similar to Sydney Gardens. You'll understand what I mean. There's going to be a retaining wall going round here. And I'm going to add some scenery and other bits of detail potentially there as well. If I had gone with my original idea of a structure with a road on it going across the top of here, the problem was adding any retaining walls here, they'd have to be removed so I can get to the narrow gauge line there. I do feel over time it would end up knocking bits of scenery and detail out of the way, etc., and causing damage. With this idea I've got in mind, I won't need to do that. And also, I will be getting some possible retaining walls or something or other going down along here on the ends. And then I can just detail it up with some walls going down across the ends here on the sides of the track where the ballast is. And of course, getting static grass put there, get some scenic objects, maybe some flowers, perhaps a couple of bushes, maybe even try and add a very small amount of landscaping, maybe even stick a couple of trees on it or something. You get the idea. Something similar to Sydney Gardens, but nothing quite identical. It's sort of loosely taking inspiration from it. So I've made a start on this area, on these ends of the baseboards, by painting them using burnt umber, this being an acrylic paint. So I've done both sides. So I'll let that dry before I start putting scenery on it. But I won't be doing that just yet. But I've done that bit first of all, I might as well do it now. And then that way. Once I've started adding put the tunnel portals and some of the other scenics, that means later on it saves me having to paint around them. So I might as well paint these parts of the baseboards while there's nothing on them. It's just easier for me that way, I find. So the first of the tunnel portals have arrived for the layout. I don't need to tell you which ones I've gone for because I've already discussed that. But these are the Batman double track single bore tunnels. This is one of them, out of the box, and I think the attention to detail on these is exquisite. And particularly with the brickwork and the weathering that they've done. There's no detail on the backs of the tunnel. I was thinking of maybe getting some plastic card to possibly cover over these, but it would be a bit tricky because otherwise they wouldn't really just sit nice and flush on here to be honest and then you'd be left with a big gap around the portal there or the bore I should say rather so I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to paint the backs of these and then just leave it as it is I don't think... right peeps we've got a problem basically this tunnel portal well either of them. Now they will fit across there perfectly fine. My original intention was to have it close to the curve but I can't do that. I'm going to have to bring it forwards a little because locomotives with the pantographs, well running with the pantographs raised anyway at least, they have a tendency to hit the tunnel almost just there. And that's because I think it's going into a curve. Yeah, bring it forward to bit on a straight, no problem at all. But that's not really the big problem. Because, you have to excuse for the camera panning over, but I can't really do this any other way without just filming more clips and editing, so deal with it. But as you can see, it doesn't exactly fit across here. It really was one of those moments where I wanted to scream and swear. 
there is a way that we can get around it we think what we're going to have to do is to modify it by cutting out a bit on the ends here and then perhaps even cutting it on an angle sort of and then raising it up and that should cure that problem that couch over there well just to try and speed this part of the video up a bit I'm going to show you where we're currently at with the tunnel portals so here are those bits of wood that we glued together and then with the help of my dad they've been cut out the ones that are marked out to fit underneath the tunnels to raise them up now to be consistent both tunnel portals will need to be raised because I think it will it will look better that way because otherwise I just think it might look a bit silly if one of them has been raised up and the other one hasn't and then what I've done with these so I've cladded the sides using brick embossed plastic card and then that's been painted using this Phoenix Precision Engineers Blue Brick Matte Paint I mean there are some imperfections here and there but that's n nothing to worry about you either aren't going to notice them or weathering will cover that up now I know you're thinking at this point should there not be any mortar detail on these well there should be yes but because I've decided that these are going under the tunnel and that there is a difference in the size with the brickwork on the plastic card compared to the brickwork on the tunnel I've decided I'm not going to add the mortar detail there will be walls going across in the middle of the tunnel portals so it looks like there's a wall there and they'll be done using plastic card, they'll get painted up and there will be mortar detail etc two of them I've already gone under one of the tunnel portal as you can see here I know there's a difference in colour as you can see but I think some weathering will help blend that in hopefully but at the moment I think that's looking alright it is a modification again that I hadn't expected to be doing but it has to be done really quick update I have weathered these parts now I haven't done anything fancy all I've done is I've used the Tamiya Weathering Master specifically the soot used a cotton bud I wiped some excess off on a piece of tissue paper just here and then I've just done nothing spectacular I've just basically gone over the cotton bud and just rubbed it on the areas where it's going to be most noticeable where you're going to see these bits anyway and so I think the weathering has helped it blend in I think especially if I get one of these bits these are unpainted in my opinion I do think they do look a bit better on the tunnel with weathering as you can see here as opposed to not weathered so it makes them look like they've been aged and it does help it I think blend it in I think and makes it look a bit better I haven't bothered to do it right peeps it's now time to fit the first tunnel portal onto the layout so I'm gonna glue it in place just using you here nothing fancy this should do the job. I know you can't really see what I'm doing at the moment but I am putting some glue what should we call them? Posts? Pillars? <laughs> and then we're just going to glue that to here Now, what we need to do now is to test with locomotives certain ones to ensure that they can actually get through. 
So there's the W1. More specifically, the experimental as built one. Because the footsteps, they do stick out further on that one than any other low cut. But as you can see, that goes through there perfectly. No need to test with an electric low cut. So I've got the Acura Scale 92 out. The reason for this particular one being out because the pantograph is at the highest height of any of my other electric low cuts that I have. As you can see, no problem at all. Obviously the locomotive will not be going down on that line in reverse. But this is just a test. Happy days. So I'm pleased with that. So now to fit the other portal into play. Right. So I have took out some of the ballast here. And I will have to add some more back into that to fill in any gaps. But no need to worry. I am having to add some more Yoohoo on as well. The only thing with this one that I can see is that this one isn't, for the time being, going to stand up on its own. Also, I realised a bit more. Ballast might have to come out. There we go. But that still won't stay in position, so to fix that, I'm just going to use these jars. Like so, that's only temporary, of course. And also, just while we're at it, we might as well test it out. There we go, that's sorted. Try the 92 now. Fits like a glove. Just making sure I've got the control now facing in the right direction. Right, so we're going to leave the glue to set for that. Then we'll come back and do some more progress, but I'm not going to do it tonight when I'm filming this clip. No okay, so the narrow gauge tunnel portals have arrived in the post. This is one of them that I've unboxed just to show you. And again, the detail on these is exquisite. And what I like about these in particular is that both sides. I've got detail on them, even the sides there, on the ends, and the top as well. They've got detail on it. Not that you're ever going to see the other side once it's on the layout, but that's what I like about these. And I think that they look fantastic. Right, so now we're going to fit the narrow gauge tunnel port walls. Now I'm only going to show fitting one of them in, so again I've got my tape measure out, that is just to see just where exactly I need to put this, so it's level with the tunnel portal on the double O gauge part of the railway.
And then we just stick it into place like so. And that is level with the other portal. And then what we're going to do is just to ensure while the glue sets that this stays in place, just a couple of little jars to hold it into position. Right, so with the one narrow gauge tunnel portal in place, the other one over there is still yet to go in to place. But what I'm starting now is the walls. Now I was thinking of making it out of wood, but because of the weight instead, because there would be too much weight on here really, we're going to be using polystyrene sheets such as this. And that's going to be cladded in brick embossed plastic card. So I'm going to get those first sheets glued onto it. And then really it's just a matter of trimming down obviously the polystyrene bits. So it's not really going to matter to be honest at the moment because obviously this is all going to get trimmed down to size so you won't really notice it and of course it will get painted up and detailed later on it's taken just over a week to get to the point where I am now but these walls are now finished well they're not finished of course they need to be painted and detailed but in terms of making the walls they are pretty much finished I haven't shown too much on screen making these because there wasn't really a lot in it all I did really was glue some plastic card bricking box seats onto polystyrene and it has been used using a strong PVA doing this now originally these walls are actually taller than what they are here but because those two bits on the ends just there and down here were to different height compared to the walls in the middle which were taller in height and they were much bigger in other words basically I took an actual whole sheet of the brick embossed plastic card and glued it onto some polystyrene so the walls were bigger but I decided it would be better for them to be cut down to size so that all the walls were all at a consistent height and that's basically what I've done and for that I just marked it out with a pencil then used a ruler drew a line down along the bits that needed cutting and then I used a scalpel basically and used it to cut it now none of these walls are fixed into place they are just loosely in place for now just to show you how they will look so it's just to give an impression basically I mean there have been a couple of imperfections here and there that I've done my best to do there were gaps in some parts particularly in bits where I had to use for example the middle section in the middle which is made out of at least four pieces of brick embossed plastic card to fill in gaps I've used Deluxe Materials white model light filler I did try to add in the mortar detail back but that just wasn't happening it just wouldn't come out right so I didn't bother like I say when it's all painted and it's been detailed up it's going to look fantastic Right, so it's the following day and I'm going to paint the walls and I'm going to be using a spray paint by a brand I've never tried before Gold by Montana Cans and I'm going to be using Deep Sea Now this is the paint that they used on Pete Waterman's Making Tracks 3 layout 
And those of you who watch New Junction's videos, this is the paint that he used for his tunnel portals as well. So I thought, because the results looked very good, that I would give this paint a go. So, the painting for the brickwork on these walls, well the base colour at least, is done. And so it has come out really really well, and I'm rather pleased with it. For these parts here though, I actually had to replace some of these brick embossed plastic card sheets, because some of them didn't really come out well. On the one side they came out perfect, but when I did it for the other side, for some reason they just did not come out too well, so I had to change those. Except for this one though, this section here, totally fine. Nothing wrong with that one, but for the others it was different. Now I have also had to make some touch-ups to these as well, as you can probably see by some of these patches. Well, I've just patched some areas up where the paint decided to peel off using Phoenix Precision blue brick paint. It is a slightly different shade to the stuff made by Montana Cans, the deep sea colour. But to be honest with you I don't think it's really going to matter. Once these have been given the mortar and perhaps even some weathering and who knows maybe even graffiti I don't think you're really going to notice. Quick test for the narrow gauge tunnel portals. Just to see that my locos will go through them. And I'm doing this before. So I've got my narrow gauge locos running in cavalcade for this. So they're going through the first portal. So they've gone through that one okay. No problems there. And now for the other portal. Now with this one, the track is not as straight as on the other one because it comes into this curve here. That's how I wanted it to be. I didn't want it all to be all straight. So this is probably the crucial one. So here comes the cavalcade. Success. No problems. So I think this is the point in the video you're expecting me to show off the finished walls with more to detail. But I've had a change of plan. There's been a change of heart. I'm not going to be adding more to detail into these walls now. And there is a reason for that. For the mortar, I was using Revel 35 flesh mat, thinned it down with acrylic thinners, and then I applied it. But even though I used the same technique for the brickwork on the station platforms, which worked wonders for that, for the walls, it didn't quite work out. I'm not sure what happened, whether I just applied perhaps too much of the thinned down paint or the paint hadn't been thinned down enough but when it came to removing the excess it wouldn't really come off so easily. I had to give it a really good hard scrub and even then I couldn't get it all off. And in the end I decided I would just, just wasn't happy with the end result. So to save any sleepless nights what I decided to do was I decided to respray them. Some of them I managed to get away with it as I've still managed to preserve the brick and mortar data on those but for others I had to replace the brick and boss plastic art sheets so it was a good thing I had some spares it was also a good thing I had a second can of the deep sea colour from Montana cans 
because I was starting to run out with the one can. I then decided to use a slightly different technique using the same paint but this time I thinned it down a lot more so it was basically like a wash. But even when I did a test piece with it I still wasn't 100% pleased with the end result. And then when I was looking at the other pieces without the mortar detail on them I realised that I quite like them without the mortar detail. I think they look quite nice. But I decided I quite like these walls without the without the mortar detail and so that's what I decided I'm going to do I know some people might think they'll look unfinished but I'm going to use a bit of poetic license in my head I've decided that at some stage these walls were painted hence why you can't see the mortar detail I think that can work I don't see a reason why it can't because that does happen in real life right so I'm making some coping stones to go on tops of the walls and all I've done with this is I've cut some strips of card and I've painted them using Woodland Scenics concrete paint they're not perfect but I'm not aiming for that there are some imperfections in places but that's okay and then once I've added some other little details on them even giving them some slight weather in, I think they should look alright on the walls. So back in late January, the Cavalax model's brand new Class 56 was finally released. I've already done my review on this model, so for those of you who have not watched it yet, then do check it out. And as you'll all know, as you can see in front of you, and those who have watched my review on it already, I own two of these models, 56023 and 56074, both in the Rail Freight coal set delivery although I've still yet to fit the accessories from the detail bags to them but I will be doing that I haven't forgotten it and because they are so good I ended up acquiring a third <laughs> so the third loco that I've acquired is 56093 in the BR Large logo livery it's not a livery that I would have grown up with on these locomotives personally because by the time I was born this livery wasn't really around on these locomotives unless perhaps maybe there was the odd one knocking about but not that I can remember although I do know sometime in the early 2000s I think it was before it was withdrawn with EWS 56105 did receive this livery and I think that may have been 2005-2006 I think somewhere around that time. The only time I would have seen 56 in this livery is if it's been retro repaints on a heritage line or a locomotive still in service on the main line. But I think the large logo livery really does look smart on the 56. Especially with all these white embellishments which are Tinsley white embellishments because that's something they did do on their locomotives. I don't know if it's something they did on all of them but they did do it on a number of locomotives and I think the Tinsley White embellishments on this livery on this locomotive really sets it off and I, in the last couple of years I have taken an interest in Tinsley Depot and I do have a couple of other locos that were based at Tinsley with 45105 and 47375 as well as the Snowplow, Snow King and Snow Queen that I believe were also Tinsley based so nice to have this locomotive to go with those I'm not going to bore you spending a long period of time talking about all the detail etc that this model has because I've already done that in my review. These are still in stock but I don't think there's many left because they are selling rather well. So at the time when this video does get uploaded 
if they're still in stock with the retailers that stock them, then I definitely recommend you bag one because they are seriously worth getting and they are worth the money that they're priced at. Although they are going to be doing another batch in the future, so if you do miss out on this one, then it's something to consider in the future, and it'll be interesting to see what liveries they tackle in the future. I'd like to see a 56 in the civil engineer's livery. Now, I must be honest at this point, there was one issue I did have with this model. When I first put it on the tracks and ran it, there was a problem with this bogey derailing. I thought to myself, well, that's strange because my other 56s haven't had any problems and they've certainly not had this problem. So what could it be? There wasn't anything in the track causing the problem, such as bits of ballast or whatever. So, upon investigating, I saw that this one wheel set didn't quite seem to line up with the others. So I thought to myself, is this a back-to-back -back issue? But on closer investigation, that doesn't seem to be the problem. Or at least it didn't seem to be. Because, I mean, these wheels, they will move up and down. There is some play in them, of course. As you can see. But, I noticed that, as you can see, on the ends of the bogies, you have these clips. And they go together, and that basically holds the wheel sets in place. Problem was, those clips weren't even touching. They weren't clipped together. Which meant that this wheel set wasn't really fixed in place very well, causing the problem. So a bit of super glue on a small flathead screwdriver to glue these two clips together on the end of the bogey. And that's called the problem because touch wood I've run it for several laps on the layout and it's not had this problem, so that's cured the problem. I know that this isn't something that we should be having to do with these models, quite so, but if you can fix the problem, I can, I can fix the problem if I can, basically, rather than sending it back for another. But aside from that little issue with 56093, which I have now sorted, I am otherwise still very glad that I got this model to go with the other two that I have. And I think that all three of these 56s are going to make fantastic additions to the fleet. I'm going to enjoy having them running on the layout for many years to come. And who knows, what's to say in the future when they do other batches that <laughs> perhaps another loco won't join these. Who knows what the future brings, eh? But, at this time, I'm more than happy to have these three, for now. So one thing I have done one little touch up is the brickwork on the bits that we've used to raise up the tunnel. I have decided to put some more to detail on those after all. And all I've done there is just heavily thin down some Revel flesh matte paint, number 35. And I know I have said that I wasn't going to add this on, I was just going to leave it without the mortar on, which is what I did before, but I decided afterwards that it needed the mortar detail on it, and so that's what I've done. And these are the coping stones that I now finished, and what I've done with these I've added different variation of weathering, just to add a little bit more variety and interest to them, so I'm quite pleased with those. So now we need to glue those onto the walls and then get the, glue, the walls glued in place. Right, so the first wall I'm going to stick into place is one of these pieces that 
fits on the end. So that one is going to go just there. So I've got my glue gun. And I have had to use the extension lead for this. So there we are, that's the first one. That's how the walls are looking at the moment. I'll call them finished, though I have still got to fill in the noticeable gaps. There's one of them over there that will be covered over, and also there's a couple of loose bits of polystyrene there to get rid of. And I could at some stage look at going along with a bit further with the detailing, such as adding things like maybe weathering or even graffiti. If I do go down the road of graffiti though, I'll be going for transfers because my art skills when it comes to drawing are not that great so it will be transfers for that and I will look at doing graffiti later on but I am pretty pleased with how the walls are looking so well chuffed with how those have turned out there are going to be a few imperfections as, w as well here and there particularly with some of the coping stones but to be honest with you it doesn't have to be perfect and I'm happy with how it's looking well, so now I'm going to start filling in the gaps. And the stuff I'm going to be using is this stuff I have here. And I have to be honest, I actually can't remember what it is. So there we go, that's that, that gap done. So now my attention is going to turn to adding some more details over to this side of this section of the layout now. So I'm going to turn my attention to the ends of the layout, basically, going down either side, which you can't see on the screen at the moment. What I've planned for these is to use retaining walls and these are the ones I'm going to be using, I've got four packs of them here these are Hornby Scaledale high level arched retaining walls in the engineer's blue brick so I'm going to turn my attention first of all to this side so here's one of the walls out of the box. In each pack you get two of these. They are made out of resin so there's quite a bit of weight to these but the detail on these is fantastic. They do look very realistic looking indeed and what's more both sides have got detail. And the plan is for these is I'm going to stick them along here 
so they'll run all the way down along the end. Basically. So those retaining walls over on that side are now in place and I'm quite pleased with where they are I think they'll look really good there. Now I'm turning my attention to this area. Now I'm not just, I'm not just going to go and glue the retaining walls in place because this is an area where we walk into and really they need something to be at the back of here to protect the retaining walls so they don't get knocked out of place. So what's going to happen is I've had to make a modification to that wall there. I've had to make that so that it's going to sit a lot more flusher. It does stick out a little bit still of the baseboard but not as much as it did previously. And here's the section that I've cut off. And what's going to happen is that old bit of laminated board at the back is going to have a back seam glued to it and it's going to go on the back of here where these retaining walls are going to go that's the plan right peeps off camera me and my dad have both fitted together this laminated board that will protect those retaining walls on the old layout I did have a row of these going all the way down along the edge there so in time I may decide to fit the others back on, I don't know. This did have paint on it as well, but that peeled off. That was just peeling off. I don't think it was ideal or suitable paint for it, really. But that's not going to really matter. Now, I did say I was going to get a back seam fitted along here, but luck would have it, these retaining walls actually cover up the laminated board. What were the odds? I had no idea that these were going to be the right height for this board so there's no not going to be a need to stick a back scene up on there so I'll get these walls fitted in place So this area is coming on, there's still much to do yet, so it's not finished, but it is getting there. I'm really pleased with how it's starting to come together. So my next project for this area is going to be adding retaining walls along this area, along here. And the retaining walls I'm going to be using are these knock retaining walls. These are the extra long ones that I've got. These are made of hard foam. You can cut them to length and even bend them. But I believe for bending them you use a hairdryer for that to heat them and then you can bend them. If memory serves me correctly, I think that's what you do. I will double check. Now, originally I was going to go for the ones similar to these but they had the brickwork. But I couldn't really get hold of those in this country. The only place I could get it from is places such as Germany or the United States. But I don't buy from places like there for one reason or another. One reason is because of the postage and packing. Because of how expensive it is. So I went on to Gage Master and they had these ones. These are the stone ones and I actually think that they look really nice. And because I quite like them, I ended up buying some of these. I have bought three of them in total though 
only two have arrived at the moment, I'm still waiting for the third one. But I'm still going to make a start with these. Okay peeps, so this is how this scene is starting to look. Like I say, I'm still waiting for a third of these walls to turn up, so when that arrives that can then finish this off. Now it turned out, no matter how carefully and gentle I was bending it, it still ended up breaking into bits basically as you can see here. So what I did in the end, I just resorted to just breaking it up into pieces, allowing me to basically get the shape that I really wanted. The fact that there are some gaps in between the wall, to be honest, is not something that's really bothering me because when it's finished it's not going to be noticeable, any of these gaps, because I've gone out and bought some stuff to fill in the gaps. I'm going to use something to represent climbing vines. It's the same stuff I've been using for filling in the gaps in the tunnel on the walls and the stuff is called dried moss. That was also the stuff I'd used to fill in the gaps on the tunnel walls. I've only just recently... Right peeps, we've had a delivery and my third knock retaining wall has arrived. So this will finish off the retaining walls along this area nicely. So I'm very happy with how these retaining walls are looking but what I need to do now is to fill the gaps in and to do this I'm going to be using dried moss I got this from Baker Ross, not too expensive this is a 100 gram bag so there should be enough here, more than enough to fill in these gaps on the retaining walls
the gaps on the retaining walls have been filled in with the dried moss and it really has added realism and depth to these. There was a slight gap there which I had been in two minds about filling in with and in the end I decided to add some moss to that but I've not added a lot to that because it was only a slight gap so I just added a small amount there. The rest of it I've had larger amounts to fill in larger gaps but it has done I think an excellent job of it and it's not all the same colour as well there is some difference in colours with this so that's added further realism and variety and I know that there's probably other stuff that could have been used to fill in the gaps but this is what I chose to use and I really like it I have used dried moss before on the previous layout on some walls and buildings and I thought it looked really good and I still think it looks really good now I haven't really talked about these walls for a while in this video because my attention has been concentrated over on the other side. All the gaps though have been filled in, again using dried moss, but there's also some Tasma products flowered climbing vines I think they are. And that's just to add some variation and more realism. And again, filling in those gaps with stuff like the dried moss. It really has added realism and more detail to these. And I just think it looks fantastic. The next thing I need to do is to add some scenery to this area to get rid of this bare wood look. And for that I'm going to be using some of this. This is, this is stone powder, arid earth. And this is from Scale Model Scenery. I have got two tubs of this because I was unsure if one of these would do this whole area along here. So I bought two just to be on the safe side. But whether two is going to be enough, I'm not sure. But we will soon find out. I think what I am going to do though is perhaps sieve this into one of the tubs I have. Because there are quite a few big bits in this. Unless I can smash those bits up. But that's what I'm going to use to put along here. And then I'm going to add some little bits of static grass and maybe loose bits of ballast, etc. Just to really bring out some detail to that area along here. Right, all of the scale model scenery arid earth is now laid down. Before I add any more details to that area, I must let the glue dry first. So I think I'm going to leave that to dry overnight. Now at this point I haven't yet decided if I'm going to turn my attention to these areas next, before I start adding details to this area. I'm not 100% sure yet how I'm going to do that but we'll just wait and see and think about that. But regardless there's nothing much else I can do with this area now until the glue is dried.
it's the same way I've done with my ballast to be honest I've just used treated PVA glue with water and a small amount of washing up liquid works for the ballast so should work for this stuff too So off camera I have decided that I'm going to be continuing to focus on this area along here, getting it all detailed up, adding more scenery to it. I'm not just going to leave it as it is, I want to add some more scenic details here to really bring it to life and make it stand out. And then I can then turn my attention to the rest of this area, namely these bits here on the ends. I've decided I'm going to leave those for later. For now I'm turning my attention to this part that runs under the retaining walls. And at the moment I think it's looking really good, but it will look even better once I've added in some other scenic details, such as loose bits of ballast, soil, coarse turf and some bushes, maybe with a little bits and pieces, and that will really flesh this area out, I think. <laughs> This is what I'm up to at present. What I did is, first of all, I took a mix of some woodland scenic ballast and soil, and I also used some of that scale model scenery arid earth, mixed together, and then went along with that, sprinkling it on in a woodland scenic tub, shall we call it, like this one here. Then what I've done, I've gone and used some coarse turf in light green from Woodland Scenics and that's been sprinkled on mainly along this area. And I have gone over it with some treated PVA glue that I use for ballast. I am thinking of possibly maybe adding some more in other areas along here, but I'm also looking at adding some static grass but I'm not going to go too heavy with that Now I'm going to be adding some foliage, more specifically I'm going to be using the Woodland Scenics fine leaf stuff and the stuff I have here is medium green 
And the reason I'm going to be using this is because what I plan to do is I'm going to stick some buddleia in some of them. I basically saw one of Dean Park Station's videos on making buddleia and using this finely foliage. And that's something I want to try out. Now, for the buddleia, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take one of these Tasma product buddleia, such as one of these, for example, and I'm actually just taking the buddleia off of that. I know you can make this stuff yourself, but I've decided, just to save a bit of money, just basically reusing it off some of all the stuff that I've already got. And then, I'm just going to add some clump foliage. There we go. So we am going to be adding some static grass to the area. And this is going to be quite exciting because this is where I'm now going to be able to use this. Which is a World War Scenics static grass applicator and this I got for a birthday present last year from my sister so sis if you're watching thanks love ya and I've not used one of these before so I'm really looking forward to it I have used a homemade static grass applicator in the past and the results were okay but I don't think they're going to be anywhere near as realistic as using one of these so I'm going to be able to use it now and I've not been able to use it yet so this is going to be quite fun I'm not going to go too heavy with the static grass though I'm just going to be adding a bit of it in places So at present, this is where I'm up to with this part of the layout. And I have to say, I'm quite pleased with how it's looking at the moment. I mean, I could go a bit further afield with adding details here and there in places. And who knows, I may decide to add a couple more bits and pieces, but I am pretty pleased with how it's looking at the moment. You can see what a difference it makes, adding details such as foliage, coarse turf, buddleia, and even static grass. Which with the static grass I haven't gone too heavy with, but even then, it still really helps to bring this part of the layout to life, or any part for that matter. I'm going to show you as close up as I can get to the static grass that I've added. Again, as I've said, I haven't gone too heavy with it. 
just in a couple of places but as you can see it's very realistic looking that's created a very convincing effect I do think the results are better than the homemade static grass applicator that I used previously on the old layout One bit of detail I've not long added is this finally foliage from Woodland Scenics on this end of the tunnel covering up that bit of wall just there and then what I've done is I've taken some of the Tasma Products Budlier flowers and just super glued them onto the final leaf foliage and that makes a great bit of detail originally I was going to put it somewhere on the ground around here but I do want to have some of this arid earth exposed. I don't want it to be all covered over because again for variation, detail and even realism as well. Some more little bits of detail I've been adding to this area. I've added more buddleia flowers onto that bush there. I was happy with how it looked but you can have lots of buddleia growing on one bit of foliage such as this. I've also added some little bits of the finally foliage to some really small pieces that I had and just sprinkled them over onto this area here. just to add a little bit more detail to that big area there that didn't really have a lot of detail there something else I've been doing is I've been adding some more of this dried moss onto the walls this is just to represent something like ivy or climbing vines and I think the dried moss actually is pretty good in my opinion but I've been adding some more of it to the walls to make it look like more is growing on the walls basically the reason I started adding this stuff in the first place on these walls was to fill in the gaps but I've decided to add for some more realism to add some more of it in places so it doesn't look too uniform if that makes sense so it adds a bit more realism. I've not done this with all of them now. I have left some as they are. Over on this part of the retaining walls I've added a little bit more of the dried moss to represent again either climbing vines or ivy or something or other growing up on the retaining walls. And again I think it makes a really good detail. It really does look quite convincing I think. I could add more of it on the rest of the retaining walls if I wanted to, but I'm going to leave it as it is. I just think adding it in a number of different places and not on everywhere, all the way along the retaining walls, it'll still add. I've also gone on this side of the wall and I've added some of that dried moss just in a few places and that's mainly to cover up a few imperfections really that were here and there on it and also any gaps showing through with the coping stones and the walls. So I'm taking a little break from adding scenery to the layout and I thought I'd showcase my new toy which at the time of filming this part of the video this is my latest acquisition I know I've already shown one other new addition in this video but this video is not filmed in the same week let alone the same month it has been a couple of months have gone by at least now 
maybe, well, I think it's a couple of weeks or a month or so has gone by since I actually showered that particular item. But to you guys it doesn't seem like that, but trust me, it is. So that item at the time of filming this part of the video is not as new compared to this one. What you have in front of you is Hornby's Isle of Wight Central Railway Terrier Train Pack which comes with an Isle of Wight Terrier with the extended bunker that they ran with on the Isle of Wight and three four wheel couches and I bought this today when I'm filming this clip from Aoxys in Albury. Now this has been on the shelf the last few times I've been there. This is a pack that I have been eyeballing on the internet for quite a while now actually. And so I went down to Aoxys today, saw this, still sat on the shelf and I thought you know what it's mine because I really like this pack. I think it looks really nice. And so I bought it. And I have seen these on the internet. There's still a few on Kerner Model Rail Centre's website, for example. Priced at £195. At Aoxys, I actually got some knocked off. And I ended up paying 174 quid. So it is worth definitely going down to Aoxys because they do knock some off the price for you. I'm not going to review this model though, because I've already reviewed Hornby Terriers and their 4 and 6 wheel couches before, so I've decided to instead feature this in this video. And I have already took this out of the box to make sure that the loco works, and it does. And the packaging in this pack is very similar to that of an egg box. I think is this made out of paper mache, I think. And there we go. You can see we have the terrier and the three coaches. So here's the Isle of Wight Central train pack out of the box and on the layout. And I have to say, I'm really glad I spent the money on this set because I think it's such a nice pack to have. The locomotive I especially love. I really do love the detail, it's superb. And I really like the livery as well on a Terry. I think the Isle of Wight Central livery really does look good. I also can't see anything wrong in regards to quality either with this pack so that's also a thumbs up. One thing I would like to ask though is when the Terriers were in this livery did they have red side rods? W11 has been in this livery in preservation but in the photographs I've looked at it the side rods are not red, they're left silver. I've also seen a piece of artwork depicting this locomotive in this livery also with silver side rods, they're not red. So, were they actually red? I'm sure someone will tell me below if they know. But, I actually do like this with the red side rods. They do look striking, I think. Also, I may or may not be tempted to perhaps paint the smoke box door darts and the hinges. Because also, again, when W11 was in this livery in preservation, they were actually painted silver. And again, the artwork of or dimensioned also has the smart box door darts and the hinges painted silver so I don't know but again I still do like them as they are but like I say it's such a nice train pack it's the third terrier now Owen and one of the others I have is also an Isle of Wight terrier which is Carisbrook in the BR Malachite green livery and I know Hornby are also doing a terrier in the Isle of Wight Central lined crimson livery. 
So I might have to consider getting that one to go with this one, I think. The couches you get with this train pack are also really nice as well, I think. An interesting point, though, is the coloured glass that you see on the top. Or at least these at the top here is trying to replicate the coloured glass. Obviously on the model it's not coloured glass, it's printing. But it seems that these couches are trying to replicate Isle of Wight Railway Albury couches, which did have the coloured glass on the top. And there is one of them preserved on the Isle of Wight Railway. Now, obviously this tooling is not strictly correct really for an Albury coach, because this tooling is strobe coaches. And these are basically generic coaches that Hornby have in their range. They've been in several different liveries. It's the same story with the Hatton's Genesis coaches. They're also generic coaches that have been released in several different liveries. So I suppose make of that what you will, but even if it's not correct for an Albury coach, because Turing is more correct for the Stroudley ones. I still think that these coaches are really nice. They run pretty well as well. I'll also very quickly show you the accessory bags that you get. Here are the step boards for the couches. And for the loco, you've got these air pipes. And I shall fit those to these items later on. Overall though, I think it's a really nice set. It's not something that when it was first announced I planned to get. But, like I say, it's something that only lately has tickled my interest in getting and so I am glad that I've now got it. I like it and I'm sure I'm going to enjoy it for many years to come and it's going to be something really fun to have and that's what really matters at the end of the day. And if you're interested in getting one of these packs then I'd definitely say go for it if you, this is something that you want. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add some walls going along here, as you can see. I've got some loosely in place, just to give an idea of how they're going to look. And the ones I'm using, I'm actually reusing them from the previous layout. I was going to make some out of card sheets with the stone wall effect made by manufacturers like Metcalf or even Scale Model Scenery but to save a bit of money I'm going to be reusing these ones from the previous layout. These are stone wall strips made out of foam and I believe they're made by Osborne's models. And I do think that they look quite nice and then once these are in place they can then add scenery to these areas on the ends because I do want to get this area finished or at least what I'm going to call finished anyway and then I can move on to somewhere else But right, so now with the walls in place, I'm now going to add static grass. Now, my plan is to layer the grass, so I'm going to start with 2mm stuff, then go on to perhaps something like 4mm and then 6mm, just to build up the layers and add realism. So to start with, for the areas I'm going to be adding the grass, I'm going to be using this stuff from Knock. This is 2.5mm static grass.
So this is what I'm up to with these areas. I started off with the knock meadow grass and then I've added another couple of layers. The grass that you can see now in these areas is, I don't know who made it but it did come off eBay and I've had this stuff for a while and so I've used that. And I think it looks pretty good I think. And you can get layering glue for this, but I've actually used hairspray to layer it, and it's actually come out pretty good, I think. I also did add some of the scorched grass that I have in a couple of areas, particularly here, you can actually see that. I've only done that for this one area, though, because I didn't really have enough of it to do the other area over there. I did originally try a Hobbycraft permanent adhesive spray, but it didn't quite work out well. As you can see, there's actually a bit of glue on that wall just there, but I might be able to cover that up with something. I have also got some of the grass stuck along in a couple of areas on those walls, but that doesn't matter as such because I can always portray it like it's moss or something growing on the walls. But aside from that though, I didn't let it beat myself up, I just went and read it again and just got my head down with it and I soon had it sorted. And I will give you a close up shot of the static grass and that's actually come out pretty well I think. So that's standing up really nicely. Same with over here, just give you a quick look. This area is by all means not quite finished yet, I think I might go over it with a layer of hairspray to hold it all in place and glue it in. And then just a couple of bits of details here and there and then I can call it done. I am thinking of adding possibly maybe one or a couple of trees in these areas just again to add some more detail but we'll see but I'm not going to go too heavy with scenic details here So I've been adding the fine leaf foliage from Woodland Scenics to these areas and I've been adding some of the Tasma Products Budlia on some of them as well. And I haven't filmed adding those on camera because I've already shown that on screen already. But again, that just adds more detail to the scene, especially the Budlia as well that really does make it pop out. So I just want to quickly talk about these. Today, at the time I'm filming this clip, I walked into Ioxes and I bought these. These are a pair of Rapido trains, not quite iron meat vans, in the Caledonian Railway and Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway liveries. I walked into the shop today and I saw these. I really like them and so I bought them because I thought that they would look great with the locomotives that I do have in Caledonian Railway and Lancashire and Yorkshire liveries. I'm already looking forward to the Rapido Caledonian Railway box fans they're going to do. So I think one or two of those to go with the Mink in Caledonian Railway livery will look good. And I also do hope we'll see more Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway livery stock in the future. Turning my attention now to adding more scenic details, I'm now going to add one or two trees in these areas. I'm only going to add one in each area, over here and here. And the trees I'm going to be using are ones that I used previously on the old layout. Because that way that will save a bit of money.
the trees are now in place on the layout. And I think these trees look really good. They are quite realistic looking, I think. They can be expensive, but I think these ones weren't too expensive when I bought them. I forget which side I bought them from, but I featured them in a past video with the old layout. So some of you might, be, if you've watched that video, you might be able to remember where they came from. But I will put some of it on the video though, if I can remember. And also, some of the leaves off the trees have actually sprinkled on the bottom. Just to make it look like so that leaves are starting to fall. Just to add a little bit more detail. And here's the other tree. Again, I've done the same thing. Some leaves that were loose in the bag, I sprinkled them on the bottom. Again, to represent fallen leaves. And I think this tree is probably my favourite, actually. Again, you can just see just how realistic it looks compared to other trees you can buy on the market. There are other realistic trees on the market you can buy as well, but it just shows that getting more realistic looking trees really does make a big difference. On this wall here, I've added some more of that dried moss. So there was a gap in between just there, between the wall and the tunnel. So I filled that in with the moss. And then to cover up some of those glue marks from where I attempted to use the permanent adhesive spray that got onto the wall, again I've used some more of that dried moss just to cover that up. And just to add a little bit more realism and detail. Right, so I'm now coming on to the last few things that I want to talk about in this video before I sign it off. Now, I will be doing a running session at the end of this video. So whilst the such this is not going to be the end of the video, it will be coming up to the last part of the video where I'm talking about the progress that's been done on the layout. For now, anyway. So what we have here is a Metcalf modern platform shelter kit, which you will have seen me build in one of the previous videos of the new layout build. And so I was quite pleased with this, I thought it was a very nice kit, and this went on the station platform. However, I think it was actually during filming of the second day of filming the running session, because these are filmed over a course of a, over a few days not all in one day I should add and a slug or snow had got in and had chewed away at some of the card and had left damage to the exterior and I was livid you know you spend your time making something for it to look nice on the layout then for a creature of some sort to come along and destroy it in a way you know it is quite heartbreaking really but I didn't let it defeat me though. After a few minutes, just to clear my head, I knuckled down and I rose above it and I set about in repairing it. And what I've done is I've cladded the exterior on the front here anyway using brick embossed plastic card that you've seen me use before. And that's been painted using Humbro 70, Brick Red and Phoenix Precision Blue Brick Engineering for the bottom. Because the reason I've done that on the bottom, as you can see, is because I have seen that on some buildings. So I thought it would be nice to have on this one, just to give you a little bit more detail. The back wall there, I probably could have added some brickwork detail on that, but I chose not to. 
Yeah, it's just a bit of a customization thing, and I think it looks all right as it is. If I'm honest. I also haven't done this post here. I mean, there is a little bit of damage on it, but I don't think you can see it on camera. But I wasn't going to cover that in Brick and Boss Plastic Hard. I thought that would be a bit too time consuming, if I'm honest, so I've chosen to just leave it as it is. But I'm pleased with it now. It looks alright, I think. I know there isn't any more to detail on it before anyone says anything. I was going to add it, but for one reason or another, I haven't done it. So, there. But I'm pleased with it as it is. And I like the way it looks, regardless. And what I've also done is, as well, I've actually added a little bit of extra detail. Just to hide the joins on the walls. What I've done is I've just taken some bits of wire, painted them black and covered over them. So you've got some drains on here now as well. As you can see, the Hornby Maglite system is still working just fine. So I've just got to get this back on the layout. I don't think I'm going to be gluing it in place though, to be honest, just in case if I ever need to remove it again for whatever reason. So I'm just going to fit it loosely on the layout this time, I think. But yeah, that's this modern platform shelter kit. And yeah... I know I liked the way it looked before, but now I really do like the look of it. Now that I've repaired it, I think it looks really good. So I'm quite pleased with it. That's the main thing. As it is, after all, on my layout. So the waiting room is now back on the platform. I've also refitted the wall mounted bin, and some of that litter's gone back in place. Might not necessarily be in the exact position it was in before but oh well not to worry it's still there anyway So the last thing I want to talk about in this video, before I finish it off with a running session, I want to showcase another new arrival that's turned up. Very much like the Hornby Isle of Wight Central train pack you've already seen, this is another item that I didn't plan to get immediately when it was released, but this is something I got drawn into and tempted with later on. I haven't bought it for the sake of buying it, it's just that when I started seeing pictures etc of one of these packs I just couldn't resist one in the end and so I went and bought one and it is a Rapido Trains Wish Beach and Upwell train pack this one is in the pre-1919 GER livery I bought this one from the model centre for 215 quid because it is at the cheapest price that I could find well there's obviously no selling them for 229 or 245 And they only had two left as well. And there it is. Just look at that. That looks stunning. So you've got your loco here, which is a J70. And then you've got your two bogey tram cars. I went for this livery because they've also done the other GER livery, which the loco is in a dark brown livery and the skirting is in I think what's called the light French grey is it I think and the tram cars are in the GER Lime Maroon livery but this is the one that stood out to me I mean I do already have a couple of these tram cars already one of them is the preserved one in the Great Eastern Railway Lime Maroon already and the one that appeared in the Titfield Thunderbolts so I went for these because they're a different livery to the ones I've already got and also because what drew my attention was 
the skirting in blue as well as the GR text and the red lining and this J70 is number 127 so here's a more closer look at the Wish Beach and Upwell train pack that comes with the J70 although with the Great Eastern Railway it wasn't classified as a J70 it was classified as a C53 and then later it was classified as the J70 when it was with the LNER but there we go and I have to say when I saw this pack in pictures and videos I fell in love with it and to be able to actually see this in the flesh right now and to own one I love it and I'm really glad that I spent the money on this thing you know it it's just stunning not just the loco that you get but also the tram cars as well you know everything about it is just quality and that's what we've come to expect with Rapido to be honest for 99% of the time anyway I know I had a bit of grief with the 15XX at first but there we go it's just one of those things but you know this is set to a high standard this model there's nothing wrong with it at all works perfectly out of the box no bits missing or any damaged parts it's just absolutely stunning and it just shows the high quality and finish that the factories in China can produce sure some of them the quality control is dodgy but it just shows as well that that's not the case with everything that comes with China this is an example of it definitely because this is just absolutely exquisite I will be getting a shot of this running around on the layout as well for you guys to see in this video and of course you shall get to see it in future vids as well I've not yet fitted any of the detail parts though in the accessory bag to this yet I will do that before I do run it though I'll be fitting the doors on the end of the C53 slash J70 as well as replacing the front cow catcher so it doesn't have the gaping hole in the front because I will be taking the coupling at the front fitting buffer beam detail I might fit on the detail parts for the bogey tram cars but because I haven't fitted them for the other two that I have I might not necessarily do it for these ones but we'll see I might just do it though anyway and I will be replacing the tension locks with hunt couplings one of the things that I do like about this model is the bell is painted now when the J70s were first released they were not painted. There was a reason for it. I can't remember off the top of my head what that reason was. I did mention that in my review of that model. I think was it because that the bell is attached to the brackets and it was harder to paint? Something like that I think. Only with that model I did later on paint the bell on it. But I do like that it has been painted on this model. And so here is the J70 as it was first released by Rapido for model rail and this is in the BR livery with the early emblem and I got for this one because I do already have some LNER liveries and so it was nice to have something a bit different because I do have pre-grouping and big four era liveries it's nice to have some BR liveries as well just to have some variety and again this is a superb model and it really is a fantastic model runs well detail on is just superb and everywhere you look at it it just looks like a J70 and also in my personal opinion I do prefer them with the skirts they have also released these without the skirting so you can see the cylinders, coupling rods, valve gear and the cross heads but I just seem to prefer them with the full skirting because somehow they also look strange without the skirting I don't know why they just seem to so I do like them with the skirting and they do look quite different as well with it and here are both models side by side and it is nice to have both 
One is a J70, as it was classified later on, and one is a C53, how they were classified previously. Especially that one's in a pre-grouping livery and the other is in a BR livery. And I shall get both of these running on the layout. And who knows, I might even do a future running session with them together as well. Would be nice though if the Wish Beach and Upwall train pack had X metal number and works plates like this one here did. Because when Rapido first released them as Model Rail exclusives, they did come with etched metal number and builder's plates. These releases in the train packs don't, but I'm sure I could possibly find some from somewhere, no doubt. Right peeps, so that's the end of this video. I've done what I wanted to do for this end of the layout. I know I could always add other little bits of detail here and there, but if there are going to be any other little bits of detail to add, that'll be done at a later date. I'm happy with how this area looks and what I've done with it. I've done what I wanted to achieve with this area. So, that's made me rather happy. So, the, in the next video, I'm going to be concentrating over this end of the layout, I think. One of the things that I definitely do want to do with this area is to extend the wall running at the front here. So there isn't this gap in between the tracks here. But... We'll see, but again, that's something to do for another time. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish this video with a running session. So, all that's left for me to say is thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you like what you see, please do subscribe to the channel to see more progress on this new layout. Don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to leave a comment. And check out all my other videos I've got on the channel. But until next time, I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.